And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Metro Councilman at Large Jerry Maynard, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host Steve Gill. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank welcome you. Welcome to our new home. Great. You guys look great in HD. <laughs> Herman Cain, he's been on your show a couple of times, been in Tennessee a few times. Is he a contender? Is he a pretender? We just don't know yet. I think we really don't know yet. I think he has had a surge, but we've seen surges from Michelle Bachman. We've seen surges from Rick Perry. The key is, can he raise the money and elevate his staff? When you're at 5%, the kind of people that want to work for your campaign are different than the ones that want to work when you're leading the pack. The folks that want to write checks to campaigns are a lot more willing to part with their money if you're at 25 30% in the polls than when you're at 5%. If he can translate his surge into real momentum, and by January, I think all these guys that want to be real contenders are going to have to have about 20 or $25 million in the bank. Those who are there will be able to play in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, and Florida. Those who aren't will pass by the way. Money is always the key. It's it? always the key. And Steve is right, but he's missing one thing. You have to have organization. Not only do you have to have charisma, charisma only takes you so far. And Steve and I have both been involved in campaigns. If you do not have the organizations and you do not have those people in place, you can raise all the money you want. And charisma only takes you so far. Look at Obama and what happened with Obama versus Hillary Clinton. Obama was well organized, and because he was well organized, he knew the difference between a caucus in a primary, and he knew how to work those caucuses. And I like the fact that Herman Cain has never been a politician. It will also hurt him when you get in the middle of these mud fights and your organization is weak compared to Romney's. He's an impressive guy, as we were talking about off camera, though. He is a CEO, Correct. and he's not used to people telling him how, what to do. He's used to being the one telling what to do. That's a politician's downfall many times. Yeah, the bottom line as a candidate is there are two, two important positions in a campaign. One is the campaign manager. The other is the candidate. And candidates have to pick which one of those they want to do. If you try to do both, you know, you're looking for failure. You've got to be willing to listen and just be the candidate full time. And I think right now a lot of what Herman Cain is doing is making all the decisions in his campaign. Again, if he can elevate his staff. And the hard part is he's going to be able to pick through a lot more people now that he's at 30 percent in the poll. Right. But then you've got to pick people that are really there for you, not simply there looking, I think this guy can win. I want to ride his coattails. But, he, but even if he has good staff, you have to be disciplined. And as a candidate, you have to say to yourself, I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to stay on message. And a mm -hmm. lot of times when you're the CEO, you just say what you want to say with his <laughs> charisma. It's your company. It, it's because it's your company. And you've never been told what to do. You've been telling everybody else what to do. And so you have to be disciplined. I want to know how much money he's raised because that will tell me how disciplined he is and making those phone calls day in and day night to donors. One good thing he is coming about that he is selling us his 999 plan. He thinks this is the way to get us out of this recession that we're in to improve the economy. Other folks are saying, well, this would actually be one tax on top of other tax, depending on which state you live in, which is true. But I guess the question is, at least it's a plan that no one else has put forward. I'm very proud that he put forward a plan, but I went to his website, and it, I got some major problems. If you live in the state of Ohio, you pay a county income tax, a state income tax, four and a quarter in sales tax. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. you got to pay a 9% uh, uh, sales tax, national sales tax, and a 9% uh, federal income tax. Now, I haven't seen any exemptions, Bob, on his sales tax. That means that you're going to have somebody making $20,000 a year will have to pay 9% federal sales tax on food, clothing, and goods and services on top of the four and a quarter they're already paying, on top of the county income tax, on top of the state income tax. I mean, that's really going to be devastating to people making $30,000 and below. We're hearing so much about fairness, and right now we've got a system in our country where half the people in this country pay zero mm -hmm. federal income tax. They're getting a free ride, and you're watching people out on the Occupy Wall Street uh, husting saying, that's not enough. We don't want a free ride. We want a free ride, and you give us stuff. I think what you're looking at with a national sales tax is then everybody has a dog in the hunt. Everybody's going to be upset about wasteful government spending because it's their money. Everybody's going to be worried about how we get big bangs for our bucks with what we spend on because it's their money. I think the other thing is when you're taking the tax rates for corporate down from the 30, 35, when you look at the overall tax rate for people in the 50% range, down to that 9% range, whether it's corporate taxes, capital gains taxes, sales taxes, you're actually lowering the tax rate, which keeps more money in people's pockets so they can make decisions based on what they want rather than sort of a tweaking because of the tax cut. I want to say what Steve said, that they're not paying taxes. They are paying taxes. People making $30,000 and below are paying FICA, Social Security, and payroll taxes. So they are paying taxes. Thank God we do have some exemptions and some 
credits and other things that allow somebody making twenty thousand dollars to keep more of their money. I have a question with the nine nine nine. Does it get rid of all of the tax credits? Does it get rid of the child credit? He hasn't I don't said know. It. He hasn't said it. I went to his website, Bob. It, there is there's nothing about thresholds, there's nothing about tax credits, and there's nothing about if you take your child to child care credits, nothing like that that help people who are making thirty thousand below, it helps them keep more of their money in order to have a quality of life. The bottom line though is that the federal income taxes are paid by the top half starting at about thirty five thousand below that level it is zero and when you've got that many people getting a free ride and keep in mind that social security taxes ostensibly go into your fund and come out to you that is not necessarily intended to be funding other people's efforts the federal income tax is still the primary basis on which we run our government and that is being paid by half the people in the country and that's simply not a system that can one last herman cain question does he pose the greatest threat to president obama he's receiving about twenty four twenty five percent of the black vote if he siphons that off of the president that could be really detrimental and there's no way once we get to learn who herman cain is and once he continues to talk the way he's talking, like when he talks about people in Occupy Wall Street, that basically if, you, if you're upset, you should be upset with yourself because if you don't have a job, it's your fault. When people are getting laid off every day, those numbers will go down. They will not go up. What Herman Cain is doing right now is trying to appeal to the base of the Republican Party, and I understand why. As he continues to appeal to that base, more African Americans will say, wait a minute, I don't like this guy. Plus, Obama hasn't been out there against one uh-huh. person. And when it's Obama against one person, Obama's going to rise higher and higher, and the African American American community will vote 95 percent for, for, for Obama in the next election. Well, Herman Cain's correctly pointing out that you are judged by your own responsibility, your own accountability. And a lot of the folks who are on this Occupy Wall Street business are out there literally asking for free college tuition for themselves, asking for something for nothing rather than what we heard from John F. Kennedy years ago. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Nobody out on Occupy Wall Street is talking in those terms. And President Obama, meanwhile, is blaming the American people for being being soft, the American people for not doing enough. It's our fault that he's destroyed our economy. I don't think that's going to play with the American people. Where was November. George Bush? Have you guys got a niche? <laughs> George Bush was the one that sent this economy into the recession and had record deficit spending, and we had a billion trillion dollars in these wars wait, 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 that wait, were wait, unfunded. Record, record deficit know. spending at two and three hundred billion. Now the new record is Barack Obama at one point three trillion. I, I get one point five trillion. You left off a trillion because we knew that the private sector could not would not make investments. We had to have the federal government. Spending money in order to make sure we and they have done such a good job with Solyndra spending a half trillion dollar or half billion dollars yeah. of our money on failed policies. Another billion for another crony system with well, Obama. I'll give That's you how they spend their money. General Motors. General Motors. General Motors also, and Chrysler have recovered. They got to give it to they them. They have recovered with our money. They have not paid it back. That is not true. That is an absolute lie. People can go to my website, GillReport.com. I will post the truth. They have not paid the money back. They've paid part of what they borrowed, but they are not paying their bills. They have not paid the money back, and that is the biggest lie from the they Obama administration. They have paid a portion of it back, and now That's they're right. wait, wait, wait. You just said they paid they, a portion they're, of it back. They're paying it back according to the plan that was given to them by the bailout. And so they're paying it back, and they're on time, and they're all opening up Saturn, creating 1,400 new jobs. Well, there are 400,000 people who lost their jobs last week, Jerry. I'd put the 400,000 lost jobs by Obama last week against the 1,400 he's saying are going to come at Saturn. We were losing 700,000 jobs per month under Bush. We're losing 400,000 so. per week under Obama. We'll see. <laughs> Here in Tennessee, Representative Curry Tye was arrested this week. A sad case. Let's talk about that to be first to begin with. Obviously, the man has problems. But the irony is that he was the, the bill sponsored behind the Guns and Bars bill. Should he resign because of that sponsorship? Should he resign just because he was arrested for DUI or wait until the courts sort, sort this all out? I find it uh, interesting that the same Democrats who are demanding that he resign were the same ones defending Rob Briley in 2007 when he not only got caught with a DUI, but led police on a 100-mile-an-hour chase through multiple counties. When he was arrested, he kicked out the window of the police car. He was charged with two felonies. And the same Democrats are saying Curry Todd should resign today. We're defending Rob Briley. He's got a DUI. He should be treated like everybody else with a DUI. Let his constituents decide. But the fact that there was a guns in restaurants bill doesn't mean that people won't break the law. Restaurants serve people underage all the time. That doesn't mean we need to shut down every restaurant, every bar, because one restaurant breaks the law. I can't believe Steve is defending him, number one, and two, comparing him to Rob Riley. The two are not similar at all. You had a person with a loaded gun who was out there drinking before 11 o'clock. This is the same person who said we should serve you alcohol, and you will not drink alcohol if you're a card-carrying permit owner. This guy is a card-carrying permit owner, drinking, got drunk, drove, and had a loaded pistol next to him. This shows why we should not have guns in bars. It has nothing to do with Rob Riley, and I don't know any Democrats who defended Rob Riley. I didn't defend Rob Riley, and I don't know any other Democrats who did. I do believe this. Todd should not resign unless he feels he should. The 
constituents to determine whether he gets reelected. Jimmy, we'll leave it there. Defending. Steve Gill, Jerry Maynard, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.